Greetings from Seoul, Korea, and welcome to GSL Coda Season 1, Day 3. Chase and Artos is here. How you feeling, buddy? I'm feeling great, man, because today's group is super exciting. Yes, it is. Oh, my God. It's going to be fantastic, Taysus. Hawk is playing today. The defending champion Sniper is playing today. Yeah. The Towel Terran himself. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's going to be epic, man. I, I actually I cannot wait. Uh, you were having a headache earlier today. You feeling better? Uh, it's getting better. I took some aspirin. So okay, good. Thank you, I was worried about you. Still a little bit of pain right there. That's the worst when your sinus is just like aching. Let me know if my nose starts randomly bleeding right. during the show. Okay, because well, then it comes out of your issue, eyes. But I think I'm fine. <laughs> I think it's I think it's because of like a bad play that your eyes are bleeding or something. But in fact, it's just the headache got worse. No. Um, like no, that was a good play. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> These are Virgin Mary tears of blood, man. Uh. Um, so. You know, it's a new year here. Um, we got a lot of great stuff that we haven't even really announced yet here at Golem. That's right. Uh, really we're exciting. on Twitch now. Yeah. A lot of people have wanted that for a very long time. So and there now you go. they have it. When you there watch you the GSO, you always get what you want. Always. Sometimes it takes a little time, but... Mm -hmm. So that's exciting. And yeah. we got a lot of other stuff. Uh, we're like the ultimate Santa too. Claus that doesn't care if you're good or bad. Yeah, we don't care. No. You could kill people. We probably... No, you can still watch you the GSL, You man. can still watch the GSL. Yeah, it's up to you. I, I don't know how to stop that's you. Of course I don't you know where you are. If I you get caught, you I don't know if they have GSL in jail. That's that's one of the... Well, I bet you the people in Sweden can still watch GSL when they go that's to prison. That's probably true. Nah, I've heard about that. <laughs> that prison system sounds pretty rad. <laughs> it's pretty awesome, man. Um, so, uh, your predictions for today? Uh, it's a hard one. I think Sniper, definitely going to get through. I would it's not love. a shocker. I'm, I'm going to pick Sniper, too. Yeah, well, he won the last GSL. I mean, come on. he's The kid is on fire right now. Yeah. Um, I would love to have Huck get through, and his PVT has been pretty on point, but uh, I personally don't, I feel like Gumiho might make it through, yeah, man. Yeah, I, I mean, Bomber's really good, too, but I feel like Bomber's not in the same shape that he was <laughs> yeah. necessarily in uh, when you compare him well, to not, other players. He's I would not love guaranteed to see Huck top two player in the world right now or something like that, like he was Right, for right. Well, here are our matchups, guys, that we start out with. Sniper against Huck. And then Bomber against Gumiho. Uh, this group really, there's so many ways it could go. Uh, but I feel like Sniper is in a great spot because, uh, you know, Huck, he's really known for his PvP. And lately his PvT has been completely on point. Yeah, and two Terrans uh, in the group. So. Yeah. But unfortunately for him, starting out against a Zerg. So I feel like that first match, if Huck and can win the first match, I think he's through no matter what. I agree, I agree. But I, I feel, feel like, like you know, Sniper, Sniper is going to... Sniper was so bulletproof. Yeah, his uh, PvZ, his ZVP rather, is really, really good. Yeah. So I, I feel like Sniper is is very happy with his first match here, being Huck's horse match. Bomber, uh, oddly enough, I feel like is somewhat of a dark horse in this group. I see what you we mean, have yeah. seen him be a serious badass. I mean, yeah. really have some brilliant plays. No, uh, no, it's it's but, you know, fantastic. We have a lot more to talk about with these other players here. You know what I'm saying? We see Gumio continuously get better and better and better. But look, it, I, that's actually a great match too because Bomber. When you think of him, you're like, well, this is the guy that just has more units than anybody, right? right He's just right. so good at macro. And then Gumio, it's like this is the multitasking Terran in the world. Okay, yeah. it's not even MVP. It's Gumiho. It's he does more things at once than anybody. So to see the macro style go up against the multitasking style yeah. is going to be awesome. Yeah. It's going to be so cool to see. And uh, well, the, our first match though, Sniper against Huck. Oh man, I'm sure a lot of people are tuning in for this. Yeah, he is uh, currently our number one ranked Zerg. That's right. Second overall in GSL because MVP can never be dethroned. Apparently not. MVP has so many points MVP at this point. MVP broke the GSL ladder. Yeah. He can fall out of Code S 40 times in a row he's and like, probably still be first. He's like the Bank of America of esports. He's yeah. too big to fail at this point in time. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, first, uh, fourth Code S, rather, here for Sniper. And, you know, he's um, he's very well-rounded. Yeah, he's, like he's a, a slight, really super strong Zerg, man. A like, slight similarity in play style to, um, why am I suddenly, uh, life, excuse me. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm I, actually not that surprised that he wanted GSL. I'm surprised he did that quickly, but it, I remember in his first, like, season of Code S, it was, I remember saying, like, oh, my God, this guy is, like, looking as good or better than DRG. Yeah. And here he is now, but... You know, can't, how well will he do? And look at that. Uh, Huck actually has more codesses than Sniper. Yeah. Well, Huck's, um, you know, he's a, a veteran when it comes to StarCraft 2. This guy was good during, uh, dominant even during the beta. 
Yeah, he and he's one of these people that refuses to to go off the map. No, it's true, and he fell off for a little bit there, and everyone was like, "Oh, Huck's gone. He's done for. He's he's he, over." Uh, how did he get a seed in the up and down matches? He'll never do it. And then he and went, then he's like, he actually was the first out of the group. Yeah. He didn't get first place because he lost an ST, but he like locked up his victory first. Yeah. So, I mean, he's playing well. And I can't wait to see, can he get out of this group and get into that round of well, 16? Well, I would love to see more uh, you know, foreign presence here at, uh, at the GSL. I think we had two great players this uh, season, Huck uh, and Stefano. So I think both these guys did a good shot to get to the round of 16 for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, Tasteless, our first map that we're going to be playing on, Icarus. We've only seen one game here. It was a PVZ. Yep. I'm excited we're to see how Huck wants to play. We're learning a lot um, about this map. Mm -hmm. uh, you and I are, as we could cast for you guys at home. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I actually get so excited whenever we get a new map. It oh, means yeah, yeah. so many uh, new strategies that can be performed. And when you're at this level of play, mm -hmm. GSL code S, I mean, you really can't ask for a funner uh, situation yeah. uh, when it comes down to StarCraft 2. So, um, looks like the game is now loaded up, and we're ready to do this. You guys get on Twitter, spread the word about the GSL code that's going on right now. We got Sniper against Huck. Let's do this. In the bottom right, we have a GSL code S champion. He is... MVP, Sniper. And in the upper left starting location, we have our Protoss player, one of the best foreigners in the world. He is. Eat Hulk Lady Corp. I'm actually pretty stoked about about this group, man. Seriously, the, the, I think it, you know, some hucks way good here power. in the <laughs> way, <laughs> way good power. That is uh, Korea for foreigner. Um. So, anyways, about all this, and whoa, sniper's actually getting a gas. So, sniper's going to be opening up with speed, and I think I already know why. He's going to go after those rocks immediately, which is going to make Huck Cannon two locations. And, and just so you guys know, when Artos is talking about the rocks, if you guys are not familiar with this map, there's a backdoor expansion you have yeah. that has destructible rocks there um, that you could tear down to open up an entrance. Yeah. And, uh,. You know, this is this is a very old school opening by Sniper, but it's it's for a different reason than it used to be done. It used to be done way back when Warpgate researched in about one chrono boost, <laughs> yeah, so that you could actually try to live through that. But, anyways, this is something that's going to be really annoying for Huck to deal with. If you have to cannon two different locations, I mean, that's a lot of money, and it's going to slow you down more than the Zerg getting a hundred gas. Now, in fairness, um, it should be pretty clear what's going on here. You know, it, 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 yeah. Unless it was well, like, you know, unless he was uh, maybe a hidden Ninus Worm or something like that too. What? But what? What? Oh, I thought what? for sure he was just gonna go speed, but no, he's going a really quick layer. Layer. All right. Well. Um. Okay. okay. So hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. My brain. Uh. Okay. You know what he could do? Now this is gonna sound crazy. Uh, if he goes speedling plus mutas, then there it's gonna be at least four locations at yeah, the garden. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Like the, a one, the, the both nexuses and the I entrances. I don't know that that's what he's going to do because I've never seen this and it's one base which... Why is he sending drones? Oh, oh he's going to spine, he's crawler, spine push. crawler push. Okay. All right. That makes a little bit more sense. Now, uh, People just get to watch us learn today. No, I, well, what is this, it? Oh, we, oh okay. This is, this is something you never see. Whoa, over a year since Huck has actually been in GSL. Didn't feel like it was that long. But anyways, here we go. Uh, we'll see if Huck can hold on. We're going to have spine crawlers at the front, Zerglings at the back, which means he's going to have to end up making a lot of cannons. This is a cool little strat. Yeah, this is neat. I love stuff like this. So Huck does have the cannon already making in the back, so he's going to stop those uh, rocks from dying. So that's good. Huck... Huck did suspect the uh, Lings were going to come out with some speed and go for those rocks. So he was completely ready for that already. And notice how he is adding some more cannons. The thing is, he's going to lose his gate, his forge, and that front pylon. But as long as he makes uh, a pylon behind, he's not going to die to this. Yeah. 
You know, he's got the cannons in place. And I know it's going to be 10 drones to 20 probes, and there's yeah. still only one hatch well, out. So, I mean, we look at production, that's... You know what he's going to do? He's just, he's making nothing but lings and bane. So this isn't all in. Once he yeah. breaks down the wall, he's just going to run a ton of speedlings in. So Huck needs to actually make a second wall that's gigantic. And look, he's starting to do that. Huck is actually on point. He knows exactly what's occurring here. You probably really should get that uh, forge as fast as humanly possible. Less cannons, just less options. Yeah, that is true. And uh, in fact, this I mean, at this point in time, you can actually, if you tear down the entrance with the cannons, you can actually move the overlords in there and even plant the spine crawlers. This is this is getting a little bit rough on Huck, to be honest. Um, I mean, this is, he needs to make more cannons and stuff. The, the two cannons actually just won't hold. I think he doesn't realize that there's going to be banelings with this. If it was just zerglings, he might be able to hold. But with the banelings, those two cannons are going to blow up, and he's about to lose, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't see a yeah, any this, way that he can. This recover game from is, this. I would say, about to end. And yeah. that is that's that. I mean, that is that. It is over. So just, uh, just, yeah. The, well, that was that was a really quad. That's a really good strat. And, the, and to be honest, this is like. Ooh. Ouch. ouch. Okay. So. Uh, in this game, Huck actually was figuring out what was going on quite quickly. Like, he went through the same kind of motions we did, where it's like, oh, he's going to go for speed and knock down the back rocks, put up a can. Then he's like, oh, crap, he's going to knock down my wall and run with speedling, so he started making a wall. Yeah. The thing he didn't know was the Baneling Nest. Well, yeah, exactly. It's, um, that's one of those strats you can't, since we've never seen that before, yeah. you can't really prepare for that. Well, it's impossible for him to actually scout the Baneling Nest, unless he does something unbelievable clever with a probe right which is like that's that's hard to do on a moment's notice on a new map yeah. against something you never played against something you don't suspect the sniper is actually a really great macro player so yeah uh, that was that was a rough loss but it was a really great plan by sniper that was a good snipe mm. speaking of which tasteless yes you know how the word sniper came to be a what the word sniper, do you know I how know, it came I do to be? Know. Well, there is a bird called a snipe that flies very fast, and the title sniper was given to people who could actually shoot that with a rifle. I did not know that. There you go. When did you learn that? I just sometimes I just sit down and read Wikipedia. <laughs> That's it, man. Uh, in fact, I have not brought up in a cast. Did you know that there are no? Um, you know, I like this like little. Um, Icons on cartoon boxes. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, uh, uh, cereal boxes. No, no well, females. Cartoon characters. No females. Yeah, yeah, not a single female uh, character on a, on a cereal box. Yeah, that's weird. That is weird. Hmm. Sick of this misogyny in the cereal industry. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really eat cereal, anyways. The yeah, cereal sucks. Actually, well, I eat a little bit of like muesli, but when I was a kid, I liked uh, fruity pebbles. My mom never gave it to me. And then I know like, fruity pebbles were too expensive. Yeah, I eat Cheerios, some Kicks, uh, some Light. Raisin Bran is good. Frosted Mini Wheats. Frosted Mini Wheats are sick. Yeah, those are pretty. Those are Frosted pretty good. Mini Wheats are dope, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah. I forgot it. Whoa, you're flooding my brain with all these memories yeah. of Frosted Mini Wheats. I like Captain Crunch, but it like scarred the top of my mouth from eating. That had cinnamon in it, it was right? So sharp. No. The Captain Crunch didn't have. There was one cereal that had cinnamon in it that I couldn't eat. Yeah, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, not. Oh, I'm thinking tasteless. cinnamon toast. Crunch. Tasteless. <laughs> tasteless dropped the ball. Don't you feel silly, tasteless? I do. All right. Uh, our next map is actually going to be um, Planet S. Yeah, fitting for the tournament we're in. Because um, <laughs> there's an S in it. Yeah. Um, this is this is an interesting choice by Ock. Of course, he's taking part in the Pro League with EGTL. Right. So this is definitely a map that he's going to have more experience on than Sniper. Absolutely. All right, let's go on to game number two and see if Huck comes back or if Sniper closes this out here at the GX.